What are top three mistakes people make in their CV? Uh, people are not hiring unless you're in the country. So anywhere on a job board, now job board means LinkedIn, Glassdoor, mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, Seek, for example, you need to be using an ATS compliant resume. Hey guys, welcome to Oxy Vlogs. On this channel, I talk about life, work and business in Dubai. And today we are filming our next episode with Trisha. She's a consultant and she helps people to get a dream job in Dubai. If you haven't watched my previous episode, you should do it now because we shared a lot of valuable information. So this video will be about how to write a perfect CV and how to make it so it will go through the ATS system. Trisha, please, can you uh, share more details uh, with us and more tricks and tips how to write uh, the perfect CV? Absolutely, with pleasure. How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, maybe we can start off and say, what is the ATS? Because it's probably something that a lot of job seekers might have heard of or maybe they're not really familiar. So ATS is applicant tracking software. Mm -hmm. So it's a program. Now there are many different types of programs at the end of the day, but it's a program that utilizes software to be able to screen or shortlist candidates to make sure that they are a compatible match for the job. So every application, you need to make sure that you are tailoring your CV so that it has got the same keywords, phrases or job titles, for example, to ensure that your CV will pop up on the recruiter's shortlist or that it will scan and give you a strong compatibility match. So like a pair of shoes, you know, they all get you to the same place. They all, they all look after or protect your feet. They all do the same job, but you can choose different brands. So no matter what brand you are using, they do the same thing. And it's the same with an ATS. Recruiters might use a different type of software, but at the end of the day, they facilitate making sure that the candidate is the right person for the job. Yeah. So guys, basically in simple words, our recruiters don't have time to check millions of CVs. So they use the system that filters your CV based on specific keywords, right? Absolutely, yes, summarized it well. <laughs> so what are the main sections we need to include in the CV? Yeah, it's a good question. So first of all, um, maybe a quick little tip and trick. I would really recommend for the Dubai market mm -hmm. that you are located in Dubai. So don't have on your, on your CV South Africa, for example, mm -hmm. if you're searching for a job here. So try to, to um, have the location listed in Dubai that you are actually here. Even maybe if you're not, it could be you know a matter of two week flight or two week trip to be able to get organized. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, uh, people are not hiring unless you're in the country. So it's important to list on your CV that you are or you've got you know a, a applicable time to be able to get here. So the location is something really important mm -hmm. because again, on that software, on the ATS, the location will play a factor when they're screening for candidates. It's really important that your job title matches. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, that you are going for a sales role, but you're applying for a you're applying for a marketing manager role, but you've got sales listed as your title. So make sure that the titles match the position that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's really important that you are using a chronological CV, and what that means is that you are listing your most current job all the way down to your um, to your first employment so in chronological order mm -hmm. making sure that you're including the months and the years and this is something that a lot of people uh, don't include keeping it consistent with months and years listed guys before we continue I want to say that if you've been looking for a job in Dubai but you have no success you don't hear back from recruiters and you feel desperate uh, Trisha can help you to get your dream job Trisha can you please introduce uh, your services and how you can help absolutely so we offer an array of personalized services we work one-to-one -one with all of our job seekers we support them with LinkedIn optimization, cover letters, and of course, CV writing. Mm -hmm. And for those aspiring leaders or people with more than 15 years of experience, mm -hmm. we offer support with personal branding, personality assessments, and of course, interview coaching. And do you help uh, candidates to connect with recruiters? 
Absolutely, so we've got a dedicated UAE job, search, job seeking package. This, uh, it has a list of all of the available recruiters within the industry. There's over 50 listed in this package. And of course, um, cover letter writing and email pitches and CV writing templates. Oh, sounds great. Thank you very much. Um, and also, it's important to showcase your skills. So ensuring that they are relevant to the position that you're applying for mm -hmm. and listing them in one single uh, row. You're not splitting your CV into two different columns or even three different columns. Mm -hmm. I see. And so basically you put uh, your title, under the title it should be description, brief description about yourself, correct? With exactly. the keywords. And then uh, your, uh, I don't know, competencies? Yeah, skills or core competencies. Or skills, yes. And then, so even the skills you need to write in one row, not two columns. Yeah, so the ATS doesn't really like or it finds it a little bit difficult to read tables. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a word, form, in a word document, you've got the ability to insert or create a table. So I don't recommend this. I mm -hmm. just simply would list them as you would, you know, you can separate them with like an indent or a line in between mm -hmm. them, but don't create a table. And then under the table is where you could list some significant workplace achievements. So like a summary of, yeah. of your achievements throughout your career. And then you can go into explaining in depth uh, your career in chronological order and ensuring your education is down the bottom. If it's less than mm. five years uh, recent, like completed within five years, you can put it at the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many pages uh, your CV should be like? One, two, three? Yeah, good question. So two is preferred. I mm -hmm. think someone over 20 years, maybe even 15, depending on the sector. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe if you're in a project management position, you may need that little bit extra room to explain all the projects. Mm -hmm. But generally two to two and a half is, is uh, acceptable. So what is important to put in your, uh, let's say, job experience? It should be your achievements or just job description? What yeah, do you recommend? This is a good question because, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> so many people do it, uh, could be doing it better. <laughs> so have a think about it. If I'm applying for, let's go back to the marketing manager mm -hmm. uh, position. If I want to know what job responsibilities are of a marketing manager, I can go to LinkedIn, type in marketing manager, and you'll find on the left hand side, every marketing position available will be, lo uh, will be listed. And then you'll see the responsibilities. So recruiters know what the responsibilities are. And this is what will be a winning CV or an impressive resume. You will uh, include quantifiable metrics mm -hmm. as part of your achievements. Mm -hmm. So being able to identify what you've done in the past will be able to assist companies to realize what you can do for them mm -hmm. in the future. So having quantifiable metrics listed under achievements or incorporated through the responsibilities mm -hmm. is really is what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Can you give just some examples of quantifiable metrics? Because maybe for some people it's yeah, not clear. Abs absolutely, absolutely. So for um, maybe a sales role, mm -hmm. we'll go for that example. Um, so maybe you increased new market expansions and as a result, you uh, improved your company's ROI by 3% year on year, or you, uh, you overachieved your monthly target by 10% mm -hmm. as a result of um, having roundtable discussions with key stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So clear metrics showing what you did. Mm -hmm. Some years ago when I was looking for a job and I was writing my CV, I was using Canva, Photoshop because I wanted to create, to make my CV look beautiful and attractive and stand out from the crowd. But <laughs> apparently just uh, didn't go through eight years. And I'm sure that many people still do the same because mm. they think that the design of the CV will attract mm. attention. But as you said, uh, ATS doesn't read those CV. So what would you advise to do in this yeah. case? It's a good question. So Canva is great, mm -hmm. definitely. And you can make or create an ATS compliant CV with Canva. However, you just need to be careful remembering a computer is what screens the CV. So what I recommend is using Word 
Mm -hmm. and creating one that is um, completely compliant. Now it may look a little bit basic, so you're not going to have any infographics, no big blocks, um, no fancy logos, mm -hmm. nothing like this. Mm -hmm. So create one through Word where you can uh, send it through to the ATS system confidently and then you can create one that's a little bit more visually appealing. Now that might be on Canva but you're going to be reserving that document or that version when you're sending it directly through an email okay or you're sharing it with one of your network. Mm -hmm. So so those CVs utilized in Canva and they've got the graphics they're only going to be used when you're sending it directly to someone and not mm -hmm. through a screening process. Oh, I see. But what if you apply through LinkedIn? Easy apply button. So what type of CV should you submit there? Yeah, so anywhere on a job board. Now job board means LinkedIn, Glassdoor, mm -hmm. Indeed, mm -hmm. uh, Seek, for example. Yeah. You need to be using an ATS compliant resume. The difference between easy apply and apply mm -hmm. on LinkedIn is that easy apply will screen your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can upload your CV through the LinkedIn platform itself. Versus apply, you'll be taken to an external website. Mm -hmm. Now the external website is usually or it is the company or the outsourcing third party uh, internal software. So LinkedIn has its own um, ATS system, which is what I was mentioning. Everyone's got their own different, you know, programs. Yeah. So LinkedIn is where it will use, uh, Easy Apply is where it will use their own internal Mm -hmm. It'll screen your LinkedIn profile as well and then apply is where it will take you to an external site and it's just using the resume. Today is quite trendy to uh, create a video CV and even some uh, employers they require a video CV. So what do you recommend to do? Should you create both like in a word format and video CV and send them both to the recruiter? Or what should we do? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good question. It's, and it's emerging topic at the moment. So um, I think video CVs are great. In fact, um, I've been working with a couple of clients lately on, on video CVs. So mm -hmm. definitely they, they are um, becoming more apparent and frequent in job applications. So for example, the job advert will say, please upload your answers to three or four of these questions. Mm -hmm. And you physically have to sit in front of the camera and answer the questions for mm -hmm. submission. But it's not reliant or solely on your video CV. Yeah. So you'll definitely need a paper CV that you can submit. Mm -hmm. But a video CV should be used when maybe you can attach it to your email signature and a, a networking event that you're attending to. Um, so you can have both as an option, mm -hmm. but you're only going to upload the video CV when it's requested. Mm -hmm. And what about cover letter? Should you add cover letter to your CV? Mm. Again, I think it's a tool that's fantastic and it can showcase some, some points or some factors, achievements that might not be relevant to be putting on the CV. Mm -hmm. But my humble opinion and suggestion is to only be uploading it if it's requested. Because I noticed that most people make a mistake, they just copy the information they have on CV and they put that in the cover letter yeah and it just doesn't make any sense yeah you don't want to be repeating the yeah. same information so the cover letter is used for you know when you've got maybe achievements or experiences that are not specifically relevant to the position but you still want to showcase them yeah so it's a complementary tool mm -hmm. what are top three mistakes people make in their CV mm, this is a good one <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would ATS, again, I know we've covered it a lot, but submitting a CV that, that looks great, but it just doesn't pass the system. Mm -hmm. So make sure that it's applicant tracking friendly, um, not tailoring it to the position. So having one generic CV and just sending it to every single job. So this doesn't showcase a tailored approach. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely uh, one mistake. And I think ensuring that the keywords are matching. So for example, if the, if the job is um, saying, you know, they want to have market expansion or digitalization, that you're not showcasing what you have done in the past mm -hmm. uh, and incorporating that experience in achievement based uh, display. Mm -hmm. So that would be my, my uh, tips. Thank you very much. It was very useful. So guys, hopefully now you know what type of CV you need to submit. You just need simple word document. Don't make it too complicated. Use the right keywords. Make sure that you list your achievements instead of description. 
and um, I'm sure that you will get a better response from the recruiters. And again, if you need any help, you can always reach out to Trisha. The link is in the description under this video. And I will see you in the next episode.